I, I've read this album, How It Came Together Was No Walk in the Park. But before we get to that seemingly traumatizing experience, take me back to the origin, the, the origins of, of the idea for this record. What kind of album were you hoping to make? Yeah, an honest one, which is always uh, a little bit more of a daunting task uh, than than that seems. But, uh, you know, I think that you have a tendency when you're writing songs to get in the way of the songs, in, in a sense, to put, to interfere uh, between you and, and a song that is really representative of your musical spirit or personality. And, and I find with every record, I have learned to put myself less in between M- m- whatever is inside me and what comes out and is put down on on uh, on tape and and I think this record I just felt a real sense of freedom and so did the rest of the band. As Literally, well. how do you do that? How do you <laughs> prevent yourself from getting in between what's inside? Just don't second guess every every instinct that you have. You know, the, whatever urge you have to put, you know, take your your music or your band in a certain direction. Follow it. Be 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 faithful to that. That that the the. the It'll take you to the place that you need to get to, and don't uh, constantly question that that direction. And that's a hard thing to do when you're starting out because you're scared to lose the thing that you've worked so hard for. Well, the thing that you've worked so hard for too. I mean, you guys have—it's now a decade and a half—and and people have, for better or for worse, a, an idea of what the Sam Roberts sound is. Mm-hmm. Does that feel constrictive to you when you go into a new record? We, we we've never let it get to us, and in fact, we I'd, I'm curious, you know how they come to such a quick and easy definition of it when we struggle so hard to find it ourselves, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's not that's nothing that we bring into the studio, certainly nothing that I bring into the writing process. When I'm alone in my basement, I'm starting to work on a new song, a new record. Yeah, I, I, I leave that But it does outside. sound like you're branching out with this record. Consciously I, so? I think it's more about what, what parts, elements of your musical personality you allow to bubble to the surface. It's all been in there. We grew up... Uh, listening to the, to so many different kinds of music, and we were there to, you know, experience the music being made in the '80s. It was a highly influential time for us. So, uh, you know, bands like uh, Happy Mondays, bands like uh, The Smiths, uh, which are things that maybe haven't sort of come poked to the surface as much in in some of our previous records. We're we're still a very formative part mm. of our musical development in our lives, and it's just a case of acknowledging that and, and allowing it to. To come forward. So as the story goes, you start searching for producers for this record and you stumble upon youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, why was he the right guy to guide this ship? Because he could distill all of those different, you know, seemingly, uh, I guess, incongruous elements and bring them together in, in one producer. You know, he, he was there for, he plays in Killing Joke, first of all. So he's, he was very much part of that, you know, Post. He lived it. He yeah, lived yeah, it yeah. exactly, and he was he was there in, in the British music scene when it switched over, and all of a sudden everything became sort of dance rock oriented. And then, I think Primal Scream sort of did the ultimate in combining fusing that sort of dance rock with still the spirit of a rock and roll album. And and again, Youth was there to, you know, he was a part of that whole thing. But he'll still go and make a crowded house record, and and has a a real ear for melody and attention to songwriting detail, which I think is still at the core of what we're trying now, to do. Now, I know you're very happy with the record, um, but well, the, I mean, the, pro- the process to getting there was, was a, a difficult one. Mm-hmm. It's difficult working with youth. You guys butted heads. What happened? Well, you know, I think in retrospect, it all seems pretty rosy now, but right at the time, you have this guy coming in there and challenging you as a songwriter, as a band, and, and questioning your... Your songs, your that material. That hadn't been done before. Not enough. To you. Not enough. So and I well, think this was a process that we needed to... Did you get your back up? Uh, at, at first, yeah, absolutely. But then you slowly start to... The first day he comes in, he's like, well, that's not the chorus. That's, that, that's you know, <laughs> the bridge. What's that? That's the bridge, yeah. And first of all, he refused to call the bridge. Even to the end, he refused to call the bridge of the song, which is, you know, for the listeners out there, that's the, the middle part of the song, right. the sort of the po- departure. The chorus yeah. Exactly, yeah. the departure. And then you come back. Uh, but he refused to call it a bridge. He had to call it a middle eight. So he stamped his will on everything, you know. And he literally sat there in the first day and he said, well, that's, you know, this is a good song, but it can be better. And, you know, <laughs> you're just like, oh, man, we, we've made a huge mistake. We've flown this guy over from England to come and work with us. We've already essentially committed to this whole project, and I think we've made a colossal mistake here. But uh, after a while, you start to implement some of those ideas. And actually, you have to have faith as a band to to pursue them. 
they may not work, but you have to try. And how, I mean, you've had the success and you, you seem like a pretty um, strong-minded guy, but how sensitive are you when somebody says, yeah, the song's okay, it's not great? Are you still a pretty sensitive guy around that? Yeah. I mean, not, you know, I didn't break down tears or anything, but it was, I, I did, you take it personally and you should take it personally. Songs are very personal things. So and what was the lesson you took out of working with somebody who is more combative or direct in the process like that? That you still have to dig in your heels. You still have to fight for your songs, but that you have to relent if a, if a, a, a better direction or idea is presented to you. And you have to acknowledge the fact that whether it comes from you or a bandmate or a producer, that you have to do what's best for the song. One of the things I don't know, I've got about a, a minute left for, with, you, with you here, but, uh, oh, by the way, oh, maybe I have to use this for the minute. Uh, you're going to come back. We'll do a proper in interview. We haven't run out of time here. You, 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 you need to come on the show more regularly. Okay, thanks. I'll uh, take you up uh, on okay. that. Thank you. We'll do it because in the meantime of this show, which has been on for the last couple of hours, uh, we started off the show talking about your beer mm -hmm. and your new nemesis, Margaret Atwood. Oh, yeah. Well, word has gotten to Margaret Atwood. Which is fantastic. So she has now responded on Twitter to what, saying, what, what came back? she says, little old moi, a nemesis? <laughs> oh, shocks. How flattering. Do I get a nemesis outfit? <laughs> so you guys are going to have to dress as superheroes now. This is, well, this is the next level. See, you know, I knew uh, that I was maybe biting off more than I could chew because obviously uh, Mrs. Atwood has a, uh, a vivid imagination and is going to take me to task. So do you. You could do this. I know. I think I can Sam Roberts versus Margaret Atwood. A beer. I've been waiting for this my whole life. You're a smackdown. You've been training for this. I have been life. unknowingly, but yeah, I'm ready to go. It's so good to have you here. Thank you very much. Congrats on the record. Thank you.